Hello again guys, it's Coach Baz. Last time we looked at what I said was the most important thing for a boxer to learn and get right, which was the stance. Went through step by step on how to do the stance correctly. Today, we're gonna look at the top six mistakes that beginners make when trying to do the boxing stance and how to avoid them. And it's actually a little bit of both from the perspective of the boxer and the perspective of the coach. Some coaching tips that you can give that I found help me to correct a boxer that's making the mistakes. So without further ado, let's get started. Mistake number one is leaning too far forwards. You'll often find boxers, when they get in the stance, is what they do is they lean forwards, okay? This is a problem for many reasons. Number one, where your head is, that's where your center of gravity is if you go straight down. So if you imagine a pole going straight down your head, wherever your head is, that's where your center of gravity is. So if my head is leaning forward above my knee, it means my center of gravity is shifting forward. I've got no power on my back foot. There's no weight on my back foot. When you're pushing forwards, when you learn how to throw a backhand and throw power punches, you want there to be some weight on your back foot so you can launch off the ground and generate some power on the back foot. If you're leaning too far forwards, there's no weight on your back foot, you're not gonna generate any power. That's the first problem with leaning too far forwards. Second problem with leaning too far forwards is you're gonna be prone to an uppercut, you're gonna be off balance, and you're gonna be susceptible to attack and not be able to defend yourself as well. So how do we avoid this problem? And if you're a coach, what can you do slightly different to help your boxers avoid making this mistake? Often what you'll find is, is a coach will ask somebody, you right-handed or left-handed? If they say right-handed, the coach will say, right, move your left foot forwards, keep right foot back, and the boxer does that. Okay, that's almost always how coaches do it. The problem with this is, as a lot of beginners tend to lean too far forwards, when they take that step forwards with their left foot, it kind of subconsciously encourages them to lunge forwards like that. Okay, and it's like they're so focused on being forwards, they end up doing that and already they're making that mistake. So how do we avoid that problem? Easy. Instead of asking them to move their left foot forward, if right-handed, ask them to keep their left foot where it is and move the right foot backwards. So if you've watched the first step, you use the skipping ropes to create a four square grid. And what I said for step one was move your right foot into the back square. Subconsciously, that takes the shift into moving, leaning backwards, rather than moving this foot forward and lunging forwards especially for a beginner. So that's mistake number one, and a tip on how I avoid, avoid that mistake. Instead of moving your left foot forwards, keep your left foot where it is, move your right foot back. And if they're putting slightly too much weight on the back foot, that's still better than putting too much weight on the front foot for now. And obviously, if there was self part, it would be the opposite. Instead of asking them to move their right foot forwards and lean forwards, just ask them to keep right foot where it is and move their left foot back so they're in that correct stance. That's mistake number one and a quick tip on how to avoid it. Just use grids and ask them to move the foot backwards instead of move the other foot forwards. Mistake number two is what I call chicken wings. For some reason, a lot of boxers, and this tends to be more the case with people who have broad or really muscular physique, is they end up with their elbows out like this, okay? The problem with that is, it's really obvious, if your elbows are out, you're exposed for punches down the side, okay? So it's really important to ask them to tuck the elbows in, right? To avoid this mistake, Rather than ask them to bring their hands up, which they're going to do that subconsciously, they've already made the mistake and then you try and correct the mistake. To avoid it, if you've seen that happen, just say, listen, 
Put your arms down your side, so your, so your arms are touching your body. And then without moving your elbows, just bend your arm upwards like that. And then bring your head down towards your arms, so you're there. Okay? So instead of saying, bring your hands up, what you're saying is, bend your knees, put your arms inside your body, bend your elbows, so the arms are bent upwards, make your fist, bring your chin down. And that's how to avoid mistake number two, which is chicken wings. Mistake number three is boxes standing too narrow. This is the third most common mistake. A lot of boxers do this. I think it comes from a subconscious to kind of stand so sideways and narrow that there's a smaller target for your opponent to aim at. Which is good thinking, but if you're standing too narrow, so if we're going back to my grid, let's say that both of my feet are on this pink line. If I get hit, there's nothing behind there to stop me from falling backwards, all right? Or if somebody hooks, and I catch it there, there's nothing in front of me to stop me from falling forward. You end up getting hit and then being in this kind of position or trying to stop myself from falling, you're going to be off balance, I'm going to be in trouble really easily. Not only that, when it comes to when you start learning how to throw your back hand, if I throw my back hand and it can rotate my back foot. If I'm stood too narrow, there's no space for me to rotate my back foot into. I end up rotating into my own body, I don't generate enough power and I'm kind of throwing myself off balance when I'm throwing my punches. To avoid this mistake, again, just use a grid. Nice and simple and effective. Always have a line going up and down and always have one foot either side of that line. So when I'm in the stance, I should always have that line being able to go between my two feet. If I'm walking backwards, I walk backwards, that line stays in between my feet. If I walk forwards, I go forwards, that line stays in between my feet. So if I get hit from here, hook, I've got that foot there on that side. If I get hit from the other side, I've got that foot there to keep me on balance. If I get hit straight, I've got the foot behind me to keep me from falling backwards. The fourth most common mistake, this one, these are getting rarer and rarer to see now. This one I tend to notice more with people who come into boxing from an MMA or some sort of wrestling or kickboxing background. Instead of standing too narrow, they stand too square, okay? The problem with this is, obviously if you stood completely square and you feel it flat sideways, you're gonna go back to the balance and get hit, you're gonna fall backwards. But even if you're in some sort of correct stance for the spot that they're coming from, like kickboxing or whatever, by standing more square, you're giving your opponent a large target to aim at. It's going to be easy to get hit. The reason they have that trade-off when it comes to something like kickboxing or MMA is so that they're able to block kicks. Okay? If you're stood a bit sideways on it, it's a bit harder to block kicks. Where if you're more square, it's easier to block kicks. In boxing, we don't need to worry about kicks, so it's not worth having that trade-off. There's no trade-off to have. Don't stand too square, okay? Right, common mistake number five is not having your chin down. You'll see a lot of boxers, they'll bring their hands up, they'll bring the chin down. That's why I'm saying it, it's not that common, they will bring the chin down. Well, then what happens is, is the second they start moving or boxing, is they slowly, they forget about the chin and it starts to come up. And if you look, when my chin's down, I'm protected, it's in between my hands. When my chin's up, my face is exposed, I'm not as protected. And if my chin isn't down and I bring my hands up to cover my head, my body's exposed and I'm holding my hands up really high, they're gonna get tired. Whereas when my chin's down, I can just rest my arms on my body, I'm protected, and I'm not using as much energy. So how do we avoid this problem? Really simple solution, use a packet of tissues, hand tissues, or a rolled up sock. So if we take a look at this, got some tissues in me here, just put it underneath the chin and ask them to prevent it from falling down. If you've noticed, I can still look fairly up 
and have my chin down without the tissue falling. I don't need to look all the way down and press it really hard against my chest. So, boxing stance. I'm in my stance, the tissue's in between my chin and my chest. I'm looking up through my eyebrows, my chin's down, I can see clearly and I'm keeping myself protected at the same time. Moving off, without letting the tissue fall down. Except just for that. The last problem, problem number six. This is something that almost every boxer gets right when they're physically getting into their stance. And then if they're a beginner, they'll almost immediately start to get wrong once they start punching and moving off. This is why I had it in last place because it's the least common mistake to make if we're talking about just stance and nothing else. But it's actually, arguably, the most common mistake to make once, once they start actually like punching and boxing. And that is dropping the right hand too low. You'll see them getting the right stance everything is nice and tight, they'll throw a punch and then when they bring the hand back, they'll bring it back too low and it'll stay too low and this side is completely exposed. We call it like the rowing boat, yeah? If you imagine like rowing a boat with your back hand, it should go straight and then come back straight to the chin. All right, something I would do, again, box of tissues, have it on the side of your face, have your hand there, just ask your boxer to get in the stance and to move about in the stance, throw the jab without dropping the box of tissues. That'll keep them kind of engaged about where the right hand is, is it in the right place? And then when it becomes a habit to keep the right hand there, you can remove the box of tissues later on. So they're the top six mistakes that beginner boxers make and a few tips on how to avoid them. I hope that's been useful. If you found that useful, please give us a like, share, it does help, leave a comment, and don't forget to subscribe and like our pages so you don't miss out on any future videos. If you've been struggling with your stance, give some of those tips a try. Check yourself out in the mirror, does it look good? If you need to ask for help, drop a comment. In the meantime, guys, take care and enjoy your boxing.